So it's likely that the knowledge, the process gaps, and the sentiment which will surface in today's session may prove challenging, difficult to hear, and at times make us all a little uncomfortable. So whilst advertisers are in the driving seat on many of the issues and solutions we will discuss today, if we don't all work together to drive transparency and accountability in the ecosystem, this will cost us all. Today is also about sharing and considering the agenda of a global media challenge that has been identified and laid down by our peers in the US to which we've already seen in the last few days considerable momentum build through the UK, US and other major markets. So first, a little background on how we got to here today. This market knows only too well the nature of the media transparency challenge. But globally, the issue reignited in March 2015 when John Mandel, the ex-MediaCom US exec, spoke at the ANA conference in the US. And for those of you not familiar with the ANA, it's our counterpart in the, in the States, so it's the Association of National Advertisers. From there, the agenda escalated as the ANA took the lead on the broader issues, publishing in June of last year the findings from the K2 investigation, which described media transparency as a pervasive issue across the US. Now, with two-thirds of AANA members having a multinational connection overseas, we intensified our already strong collaboration with the ANA off the back of the K2 report. We supported the work they were doing through this phase and we shared their findings and their subsequent recommendations that they produced with ubiquity firm decisions called prescriptions, principles and processes for advertisers. Since that report in June, the AANA has constantly sought the input of its senior members. Members talking to us in groups, We've facilitated members talking to each other through roundtables, forums, committee meetings and board meetings. Layered on top of that has been the input of the AANA Media Reference Group, who I have huge thanks for. Senior executives from Unilever, Telstra, Combank, Westpac, Foxtel, 20th Century Fox, McDonald's and Woolworths, who have added their counsel and openly shared their experiences throughout this process. And for today, Australians' national advertisers have shaped and prioritised the areas we will focus on this session. My thanks to the 40 member companies that have taken the time to connect with me in the last month and giving us a detailed and candid insight into their capabilities, their contract status, their understanding and experience around transparency issues, their concerns around the media supply chain, and more importantly, how those concerns impact their business, their ability to defend marketing investment, and to drive growth. Throughout this presentation, I will be sharing that insight to represent the sentiment among the AANA members. However, it was clear in July, August last year that media transparency was a significant and growing concern for members. So in August, with member sentiment in hand, the AANA board agreed our position on this issue. Firstly, that it remains a responsibility of the individual advertiser to satisfy themselves of the level of transparency and disclosure their business requires, a position that has been reinforced by advertisers in the US and the UK. The second is that we would put our focus and our resources into looking forward from the well-known and well-covered findings and practices in the K2 investigation. We would seek to provide advertisers the tools to navigate this issue, and we would facilitate opportunities for the whole industry to engage in constructive discussion around the solutions. Our program started with a two-part plan. First, we delivered tools and guidance an Australianised version of the ANA's media contract was produced and delivered as a starting point template for advertisers to use in their contract negotiations. To accompany the contract, we produced a detailed set of guidance notes, written as a long list of considerations, questions, for advertisers to help them understand what needs to be included and, more importantly, simply what to ask. And this was in response to the sentiment we were hearing which was, I just don't know what I don't know and I'm not sure what to ask. So I'm delighted through those 50 conversations to hear feedback that many of our members are using both 
And if you haven't seen it, both documents are available on the website, but they should all, well, at least one of them should also be in your hands this afternoon. Part two, we committed to capability development, which is the purpose of today. But the most significant factor that has shaped today's session has been the two most recent, sp recent speeches by Mark Pritchard, Chief Brand Officer at P&G and Chair of the ANA. The most compelling of those two, I think, the recent speech he gave in Orlando. I was in Orlando when he gave that address and it was personal, it was frank, it was honest and it was very challenging. The reason why his speech has resonated the world over is this. Bob Leotis, the CEO of the ANA, opened the conference with this killer slide that set the context for the critical appraisal that Mark and advertisers now around the world are responding to. Total business sales in the US have recorded two years of successive decline. In 2016, total business sales fell 7.3% to US 14.5 trillion. And as Bob says, business sales are an important proxy for marketing's power and efficacy. So for those of you that have not read my account of the ANA media conference, which Ad News published recently, CMOs must confront media's inconvenient truth, I would encourage you to, if for no other reason than to read Mark's State of the Nation address, which is repeated verbatim in that. Or for those of you that always opt for the movie over the book, the ANA have given us permission to share with you footage from that conference. Collectively, we're not all achieving the kind of growth rates that we need to achieve. Despite spending more than $200 billion in advertising in the US alone, the growth rates of our collective industries is pretty anemic. You saw it up there in what Bob shared. One reason is the quality of our advertising. Sometimes we achieve our finest craft, but all too often we bring, yes, you know what I'm gonna say, <laughs> crap. There are many reasons for the preponderance of crap including lack of time for creativity, too much activity, declining agency relationships, and just plain lack of client capability. But we're gonna talk about that another day. Today, we're gonna to talk about another reason why we're not growing enough, the quality of our media. We bombard consumers with thousands of ads a day, subject them to endless ad load times, interrupt them with pop-ups, and overpopulate their screens and feeds. And with the ad blockers growing 40% and fraud as high as 20%, who knows if they're even seeing our ads? These problems occur in all media, but they're most acute in digital advertising, where we're all now spending more than $70 billion, surpassing TV. We serve ads to consumers through a non-transparent media supply chain with poor standards adoption, too many players grading their own homework, too many hidden touches, and too many holes to allow criminals to rip us off. We have a media supply chain that is murky at best and fraudulent at worst. We need to urgently clean it up and invest the time and money we save into better advertising to drive growth. The time for talking is over. It's time for action now it's time for all of us to step up and deliver media transparency so we can drive a clean and productive media supply chain. And it's time that we come together, put down our finger pointers, and solve these problems, all of us, marketers, agencies, publishers, ad tech platforms and suppliers, together. If we all do our part, we all benefit. And best of all, consumers benefit. In fact, driving media transparency should not be optional, it's a responsibility. There's no sustainable competitive advantage for anyone in a complicated, non-transparent, inefficient, and fraudulent media supply chain. You know, the solutions to getting to a clean and productive media supply chain are very clear. Adopt one MRC viewability standard. Implement MRC accredited third-party measurement verification get transparent agency contracts, and prevent ad fraud. And these actions have really been in front of us through the ANA for several years, but we've been slow to act, P&G included. 
One reason is our tendency to chase the shiny objects. I mean, let's face it, it's a lot more fun to talk about virtual reality and artificial intelligence than bot fraud. Another reason is what I like to call head fakes. Myths, false objections, whether they're intentional or unintentional, that we've all followed and accepted and which have frankly distracted us from taking the action we need to. And perhaps another reason is that we all simply aren't sure what to do. I confess I was in this camp until I started digging into the details and learned a very valuable lesson. Media transparency can't be delegated. The CMO needs to work with all of their media and marketing partners to lead, and that means getting into the weeds, setting expectations, following through, and be willing to break some furniture every once in a while. At P&G, we're choosing to vote with our dollars. We will work with and buy media from only the entities that comply. So we know that the ads that we create are experienced by the consumers we serve in the most productive way. Now we've already achieved many and significant media supply chain efficiencies, but we believe there's a long runway ahead. We don't want to waste time and money on a crappy media supply chain. We want to invest in raising the bar on the creative craft to drive growth on our brands. Because better advertising drives growth. And that can be enabled by media transparency that drives a clean and productive media supply chain. So much of what we have to do it was predicated on believing that these are issues that we must solve. Talk to us about your epiphany and translate that to what we need to do for the rest of the CMOs and the rest of the community out there to get them going in the right direction. Well, one of the things, I've been on the a and board for going on eight years now. And uh, I used to go to the a and board meetings and Bob and his team would, would outline these issues. They would outline viewability, they would outline fraud, uh, outline transparency, the MRC guidelines, all those types of things. And I would listen intently and I understood about a tenth of it. Um, and, and what I would do is I'd go back and I would delegate it to somebody to say, hey, why don't you dig into this? And inevitably what would happen is um, I'd say, hey, we got to really look into fraud. And they'd go back and I'd come back and they'd say, they'd say, yeah, we did. We looked into it and we're good. No problem. <laughs> um, and then I said, well, we need to get this verification on you know, viewability. And they say, yeah, we're good. We're best in class. <laughs> so uh, over time, it just started to strike me that maybe there's something that's not quite right. And just after spending more time getting into some more details, I realized that this is something that, that was a personal responsibility to get into. And that, that, and that other CMOs, in order to be able to make real improvements on here, to drive growth, to clean up the supply chain, to, to elevate the creativity, mm -hmm. that was gonna require leadership right. and that we needed to do it. I, also the epiphany was that it was, it's, right, it's right there in front of us. And so I think what really helped though is the a and putting together the, the Master Circle Agenda, which is kind of the 12 point program, that's a bit of a roadmap. You know, if we do those things, I, I, I really firmly believe that the entire industry will grow. And you know, what's most important, just one little thing that also helped, is we've realized that uh, the vast majority of growth from any company, McKinsey did a study, the vast majority of growth comes from market growth. Mm. It's not market share. Market share is very small. Market growth is what drives it, which means more users, more users buying more, more users maybe paying a slight premium. Market growth is the key driver. So it just really occurred to me, the epiphany was then, geez, if all of us work together on trying to drive the market, all the boats rise, and that's better for everyone. P&G is a large advertiser. There's a lot of leverage in the marketplace. Do you have suggestions for smaller brands with more limited budgets on ways to demand media transparency without an agency review? Well, I think um, on every one of those four action steps, regardless of your size, I think the clarity with which you ask the question and make the, make the demand will we'll go a long way. I think, you, I think you might be surprised. Here's what I want. Because remember, you also have options. It's not like there's, there's no options out there. So you can still take your money and put it 
in different places. So I would really encourage you to just make the demand, ask the question, and then make the appropriate choice. Now the other thing, and Bob and Nick and I were talking about this, is you know, one of the things, this is what the industry can come together and at least make a pledge. You know, pledge to commit to the, uh, the, the 12-point agenda, pledge to commit to the action steps that we're going to take here, and use that as an opportunity to say, you know what, this is not just me, P&G, or me, a smaller company. This is the industry. The industry wants to do this. And by the way, um, publisher, agency, whatever, this is good for you, too. If we all operate on common standards, if we all focus on transparency, everybody benefits. So everybody benefits from transparency in the media supply chain. A sage comment from Mark Pritchard. So like the epiphany Mark described as he wrestled with clarity around the shortcomings in the digital media supply chain, Australian marketers too are on that very same journey. Here's a snapshot of some of the sentiment across the range of issues that Australian marketers have shared with us in the last month. The murky media supply chain has to be a priority for marketers. It's our profession at stake. With media being the biggest expense, cleaning it up has to be a key priority. But with the increasingly broadening remit of the marketer, it often feels like I have bigger fish to fry. The pressure on short-term growth is immense. My media agency is and needs to be my most valued partner and I invest and trust in that relationship. So to even entertain there is undisclosed behaviour makes it very difficult. The biggest area of transparency concern is digital media and programmatic buying. It's the dark art, no visibility. My knowledge here is just not as strong as it should be. In light of the Facebook revelations, how much of what I've been told broadly is simply not true when it comes to digital media. The only viable option to get transparency in this area is to bring it in-house. And every one of the members we spoke to was somewhere on that journey with that bottom business decision. I just don't know what percentage of my digital media spend goes to the publisher to reach the consumer. And I should know. When pushed to guess, the average response to that question was 80%. Remember that estimate. On contracts, members believe they have solid contracts in place with as much audit rights as they could negotiate. Most still unable to address audit at holding company level. The AANA contract was acknowledged as a massive step up in improving their starting place with the guidelines a helpful tool in negotiation. My media contract is like an antivirus software. Once you've installed it, it's useless against the next virus. I'm sure my contract just isn't keeping pace with the change in the media ecosystem. There are just too many areas I just don't know about. Media is too complex. I don't know how to future-proof my contract against all disclosures, we're just not experts at this. There are so many unspeakables at contract stage on both sides. We both know what's going on in the dance. Doesn't help, does it? That's what makes me suspicious. There was understanding that the holding companies are probably putting the local agencies under extreme pressures to deliver increased profit and growth. And recognition that they are businesses with targets too. So if the media vehicle choice is line ball, then of course they'll recommend what will benefit the agency. And I suppose I understand that. The troubling bit is how many times a plan recommendation can change 180 degrees when I push back. Is that a lack of rigor on their side or are they trying to get away with it? The outcome either way impacts trust. If you don't think your media agency is objective and impartial, then you're either paranoid or lazy. If you're paying a supplier, stay on top of it. Invest in it, pay fairly. Clients should do the heavy lifting to make the relationship able to deliver those things. 
If only the media owners would stop writing cheques. That would solve half the problem. The walled gardens at Facebook and Google are a significant issue affecting confidence and reputation across the entire media chain. Given the size of these companies and their profit, it's hard to believe that when they can change their technology so quickly and easily, they can't just embrace needing to be accredited and audited. We're finding workarounds that justify keeping on using them, but we really should hold them to account like we do everyone else. I know it's hurting the credibility of the whole chain. And on their own internal capability. I don't think we know what we don't know. Capability is the problem. I don't know where to start. There is a whopping big gap on media capability client side. We're bringing in ex-agency and specialists, but we're still behind. The CMO has abdicated responsibility. I haven't educated my teams on these issues. It's the blind leading the blind. We just can't be resourced to be across all this. It's not possible. That's why agencies exist, to be experts. But we're really both letting each other down. How do we fix this? So, the AANA board and its members will meet in the coming weeks to look more closely into all the sentiments and refresh and review our next steps in terms of capability development and support. But to offer some encouragement around this local sentiment, we are not alone. The challenges mirror the epiphany of Mark Pritchard and I'm told echo that of many marketers in the US. This is not just me, he said. So much so, that the ANA has created, as was referenced, the CMO Master Circle Agenda, a 12-point program to revitalise marketing's contribution to industry and enterprise at the highest levels, boards and the C-suite. And instructively, it's why today's forum is so important. Cleaning up the digital media supply chain forms a significant part of that agenda. And it's reflected directly in Mark's action plan at P&G, on addressing his digital media challenges. AANA members will hear a lot more about the Master Circle agenda in the coming weeks. But for now, a reminder of the action that P&G is taking and have asked marketers globally to pledge to. Point one, only buy digital advertising from media companies, publishers and platforms that comply with the Media Ratings Council MRC minimum viewability standard, and it's global. Now, it's worth noting here why the MRC is playing such a central role both with P&G and the ANA. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, the MRC was created at the behest of the US Congress in 1963 to ensure high ethical and operational standards in audience measurement. It's independent, it's not-for-profit, and it's impartial in how it develops standards. Point two. Demand and only buy from digital publishers and platforms that allow third-party MRC verification of the source data. The auditors need auditing. Review and renegotiate transparent media agency contracts, which allow audit rights through the media supply chain and contractually require disclosure and or returns of rebates and other forms of payments and transactions between publishers media owners and agencies, including holding companies. Prevent ad fraud by insisting any entity that touches the digital media supply chain gets Trustworthy Accountability Group certified this year. Now, we're only just beginning to scratch the surface on this issue in, in Australia, and the AANA will be back to members on this too. Now, I know that's a lot to digest, Mark has some advice on this too. Media transparency can't be delegated. The CMO needs to work with all their media and marketing partners to lead, and that means getting into the weeds. But what change can we really achieve from Australia? I know these are words I've often used here as well. So I went back to the trailblazers in the US and spoke to Bob Leotis. What did he have to say about this? 
How have US marketers responded since Pritchard's landmark address in Orlando? Bob and I landed on a Q&A format that would give some greater context and some actionable counsel for the Aussies. So the first question I asked Bob was, you opened the ANA Media Conference in Orlando by saying we needed to institutionalise the growth agenda for marketers. How critical do you think that is for the industry at large? And how are US marketers responding to that rally cry? You ask about the institutionalizing the growth agenda uh, for marketers. This is the fundamental question and the challenge that marketers have. We're in this business to grow our brands and to grow our results. That's what we are supposed to do. We're leveraging the marketers' resources. And for the most part, we have forgotten that objective. Uh, in the United States, growth is relatively anemic. We have lost our way uh, as we have essentially been led astray by the shiny objects of digital social mobile. And we need to get back to fundamentals. So the industry needs to collaborate and to get together to restore those core fundamentals and to be able to restore growth as a foundational objective. Because when the marketers grow, we create substantial resources that makes all constituents in the chain, agencies, media companies, suppliers, vendors, consultants, etc. We all win. And so it's imperative that we institutionalize this as our foundational thinking for everything that we do. Some of us will know that the ANA has been talking about the murky media supply chain for some time, almost 10 years. So I asked Bob, why suddenly the momentum? So why the momentum now? Well, I think there, is, there are a couple of things that, that are taking place. The first is the fact that the recognition that marketers only have 40% of their digital dollars that reach the consumer via the publisher. Now, 40% is an awful number. To think that we have working media that is at that low level of productivity should be alarming to us all. Now, that data isn't something that marketers dwelled on before, and they are starting to recognize that right now. The second thing, Mark Pritchard, Chief Brand Officer from Procter & Gamble. Mark's voice is loud. He's chairman of the ANA, and he is the leader of marketing for the largest advertiser in this world. And quite frankly, he's had enough. He has been waiting for the digital engine to drive P&G's growth, and it's not. And so he said, it's time to take our industry back. That loud, booming voice combined with the collaboration around the growth agenda is now starting to resonate and create the momentum that I think we have been looking for for quite a bit of time. So that 40% statistic has been around for a little while. So I asked Bob to explain a little bit further why marketers have tolerated that statistic. You ask a tremendously insightful question in, about why only 40% of the dollars reaching the consumer and why did we tolerate that? Well, let's be honest, marketers are always a little slow to react. Why? Because they've grown up historically strongly believing that somebody else was gonna take care of everything but their respective brand building and creativity. Now part of this is the function that we've sat back and watched the Lunascape evolve to the tune of now consists of over 4,000 companies that are acting as intermediaries and not all necessarily adding a hell of a lot of value. They're all taking their slice, but are they really deter delivering a return on investment for the marketers? In my opinion, a lot aren't. And what is incumbent upon us all is to step back and assess, why are you there if in fact you're not adding value? Are there other ways to be able to do business? And the answer is yes. And we're starting to get into understanding what it is that we can do, perhaps in an alternative way, such as private exchanges and blockchain technology. These are all 
areas of evolution that will help us all to pay attention to the fact that we shouldn't just stand by and accept that only 40% of our dollars are reaching the consumer. It's awful. So I shared with him that we often feel here in Australia that we can't make a huge difference when influencing the large digital enterprises to change and that it has to be led from the US. So what would he say to that? Sunita and to all that are watching this, the answer is quite simple. Everybody has a responsibility to improve the productivity of what we do. And yes, doesn't matter how big or small you are, you need to vote with your dollars. If you're not getting what you need, go elsewhere. There are many different opportunities to be able to use vehicles that perhaps you haven't thought about or explored. It just isn't about digital. I mean, of course, there's legacy media and television, radio, and print. There's outdoor, there's direct placement, there's experiential marketing, relationship marketing, promotion marketing. Uh, there are so many avenues for marketers' investments, but we as an industry need to get off our duff and explore all those alternatives and determine what's in the best interest of our media and marketing mix that's going to drive those particular investments. And finally, Mark Pritchard says, we've all had a hand in creating this mess we're facing and that it requires an all industry solution. What would Bob advise the AANA to be the first steps in this solution? Yeah, Mark Pritchard says that, that we've created this mess. We, have, uh, we are equally as responsible for the messiness in the digital media supply chain. So what are the first steps that a marketer should do? Well, like what Mark has been doing over the past two or three years is to get in the weeds. CMOs just can't sit back and delegate the responsibility for building their business to others and expect that it's gonna get all fixed. It's like the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Well, that's just horse manure. You're not gonna get there. You have gotta change the way you do business and you've gotta get involved. And that's what Mark Pritchard said he did. He got involved in the weeds and that was an eye-opening experience. So with that being said, I hope uh, this has been useful dialogue for all of you at the AANA, Sunita. It's always a pleasure working with you. We, I look forward to continuing that work with you. Um, we are joined at the hip. Uh, we are happy to bring the US and Australia together to ensure that we all win together. So uh, happy to help in the future. And thank you for, being, um, for me being part of this uh, wonderful event. Mark Pritchard and Bob Leotis have fast-tracked our ability to move on this issue. His legendary speech has had a transformative effect on this issue globally, and none of it was controversial. I told him as much in Orlando. But when P&G speaks, the industry does listen. So finally, there is momentum and there is clarity on where to go next, and it's really now for us to decide in Australia how we respond. Mark and Bob called on marketers the world over to pledge to take the plan on and clean up the media supply chain. And I promise you, AANA members will hear more about this in the next few weeks. The time actually for talking is over. The ANA, ISBA and the World Federation of Advertisers are accelerating on a systemic assault on cleaning up this. Whatever we decide to do or not in Australia, we will be swept up in the currents regardless. France, last week, has moved to enforcing a law in this area, and in my opinion, for those of us that go to work each day to promote and defend responsible industry collaboration, which is self-regulation, that's a crying shame. And now we've seen Havas Media, we've seen McDonald's, Sainsbury's, Lloyds Bank, HSBC, The Guardian, and the government in the UK, amidst brand safety concerns, suspend all of their ad spend on Google Display and YouTube until further notice. So it's not just about the duopoly though, because Amazon, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Foursquare were all put on notice this week by the, the ANA to embrace transparency and get audited by the MRC. There is momentum and a plan for us all as an industry to now discuss. 
The ANA made one interesting point in Orlando, which is the headlines and the attention and the debate that has been generated around the pervasiveness and the problems inside the media supply chain have indeed been prolific. But much less has been reported and discussed about the less shiny and more grinding solutions and the incredible hard work the industry must and is doing to resolve the issues. So let's promote the industry and collectively change that. To close, I want to finish with Mark's words. The time for talking is over. It's time for action now. It's time for all of us to step up and deliver media transparency so that we can drive a clean and productive media supply chain. And it's time that we came together. Let's put down our finger pointers and solve these problems. All of us, marketers, agencies, publishers, tech platforms, and suppliers. If we all do our part, we all benefit, and best of all, so do consumers. Driving media transparency should not be optional. It's a responsibility. And there's no sustainable competitive advantage for anyone in a complicated, non-transparent, inefficient, and fraudulent media supply chain. If all of us come together to grow the market, all the boats rise. <laughs>